Welcome to this video tutorial on creating cutaway drawings in Rhino 7. I'm going to be using Le Corbusier's Mill Owners Association building for this tutorial and I have a simple model of this building that we're going to be pulling apart and cutting away areas to expose some of the activity that's happening inside of these spaces. Now usually when taking sections through models such as this we'd be using clipping planes to kind of create a clipping plane and use it to cut a section into the model like so. But the issue with this is obviously it hides half of the model you're cutting away from. And for this particular cutaway drawing, I actually want to show all of these components but being pulled apart from the central model. So we're kind of taking off the walls, chopping into surfaces in certain conditions and clipping planes just won't allow us that accuracy and specificity when cutting into this particular model. So we're gonna be using a different technique of splitting up our base model and then pulling the geometry apart to create our cutaway drawing. So to do this, we're gonna actually be breaking apart the model we have. So it's always important to create a copy of any model you want to create a cutaway drawing from, because we will be kind of pulling bits apart from it and deconstructing it in order to create the drawing. So once you've made a copy of your model, we're now gonna start splitting this up to reveal some of our kind of cross sections and openings within this space. To do this, I'm gonna be using the split tool, which can be found on your menu down here. And first we're gonna create some kind of vertical planes, just using the vertical plane tool here, which are gonna then cut our model kind of down the middle. So I'm just gonna create a couple of these planes and we're just gonna move them into the position that we want to chop the model. And think of these as a big sort of knife that's coming in and chopping the model in half. So I'm gonna kind of take one to start with through this staircase here. And once we've got it in position, making sure that it's completely dissecting the model there, we're going to deselect our objects, select our split tool, select our objects to split, which will be our building in the center, like so. Hit enter, and then select this blue plane we've made, which will cut the objects. Hit enter again, and it will slowly start to sort of split its way through the geometry in that model, essentially cutting the model in half along the line that we've created there. Now, depending on the kind of amount of geometry you've added in, this may take a longer or shorter amount of time. But once it's split, we can then go back, and I'm gonna find this in the top view, because it's usually easier to select. We'll just open this up here, and I'm then just gonna select all of the geometry on the right-hand side of that plane. With that geometry now selected, I'm now gonna just move this over to the right, and I'm not gonna move it by a set amount just yet. We're just gonna pull it apart from that face. And if we go back to our perspective, you'll see that we've then created our kind of cut in our model, like so. And I'm gonna do this a couple more times. We're gonna do it once through the ramp here. And all I'm kind of looking to do is essentially chop the model at key locations to reveal the cross section at that point. So select our cutting tool. And we're just gonna kind of use this plane to chop it up. And you can do all your cuts at the same time if you want. I quite like doing them one at a time because it makes them easy to sort of extract out and isolate at each point. So we can then go back, select them in the top view again, and pull it apart from the scene like so. And I think we'll do one more just at this side, chopping through this kind of space here. So, and split that up like so. So all we're doing is literally just moving our plane into position and splitting the model into pieces until we've got our kind of separate fragments which we can then extract out. And once we've got those, we can then delete away that line we use to chop them. Now, when you use the split tool, what you'll find is that your geometry will then have a big hole in it where it's been cut. And if you want to kind of close this up, we can do this to the whole model just by selecting the whole thing, typing in cap. And this will cap over any of those holes and you see there all those geometries are now closed we've got closed faces which now looks much neater in our particular geometry there what i'm now going to do is we're going to space these segments off equally so each of them are pulled apart by the same amount and i think for this i'm going to do it at around 10 meters so i'm just going to use my polyline here we're going to draw a line that's 10 meters long like so and then we're just going to move my pieces into position spaced at 10 meter apart from each one and we can just do that by using my line as a guide sort of moving it into position on the segments and then moving my segments to line up with that sort of datum line we've given ourselves there 
And once we've done this initial sort of splitting, it would now be a good time to start to set up our kind of particular view that we want to take this drawing from. So now I've sort of set up all my spacing. I'm going to start to sort of pick an angle or a view that I want my drawing to be made from. Now for this, I'm actually going to switch my viewport to a parallel view because it works a little bit better with cutaway drawings such as this um, and more kind of accurate drawings that we're trying to set. And we're just going to sort of move around so we can see a nice sort of section through each pieces. The bits at the back are slightly overlapping, but I don't mind that so much. I think it's just about kind of revealing these sections in here. And once we've got that, we're going to save this as a named view. Now I've got my named view panel on the right here, but if you don't, you can always go to view, set view and named views to open up that panel. And then we hit save and we're just going to call it cutaway. So and that's sort of saved that view out. So if I accidentally roll off it, we can always snap back to that particular location. So we've done our cross sections, but there's also a couple of cutaways I want to do sort of inside the roof here to expose some of the bits below there and maybe up the side of this wall as well. Now, there are a few ways we can do this. One might be that we actually might want to just lift off the roof off the top of these. And usually I'll just do that by selecting a point using my move tool, locking it in the vertical plane, and then moving it up by a sort of set increment. And we'll do that by about 10 meters there. So we can kind of see in, but I can't really see that much in there. So I might also need to kind of cut away this wall. And this is where we might start kind of using bits of geometry to actually chop out large sections of walls or floor plates in order to reveal or expose anything. Now I'm gonna start with this left one on the side here and I'm going to use my rectangle tool to create a kind of box which I want to chop out of this frame. Um, what's quite nice when using this method is to give the kind of area that's chopping out sort of slightly rounded corners and we can do that when we select the rectangle tool, click on this rounded option here and when we draw out that rectangle on my scene and I'll do this in a red so we can see it clearly there and will then allow us to round off those corners as part of the tool. So we can create a little sort of fillet to that edge. And once we've done that, all I'm going to do is just move this box slightly off and we're going to extrude it out. And then we're going to cut out this section from my particular floor plate here. And to do that, I'm just going to use the Boolean difference tool. So I'm going to select my floor, select my object, subtract one from the other. And you see there we're chopping out that large section to sort of reveal or expose that area below. And we can do that in other locations. I might want to do it on this wall as well. We could just do it simply by kind of creating a box, moving it into position, and then using that Boolean difference tool again as well. But I'm just kind of going in and actively selecting areas that I want to reveal in my kind of pieces here that you might want to expose. It might be that I want to pull out this section of the floor and so we can be kind of very accurate with exactly which bits we're trying to reveal within the frame, which bits we're trying to hide. You might want to move some pieces up and out the way and it's all about just trying to kind of create the best view for the drawing. So I'll usually snap back to my view to make sure I can see the elements that I'm trying to expose in there and that everything's clear. And once you're happy with that, we can then start to go out and create the drawing from this. So I think I'm happy with the kind of pieces I've pulled out from the surface of my geometry here. And I'm now going to use these to build out my 2D drawing from this. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. One would be to just select all of the objects and do a kind of make 2D of them. But sometimes this can be quite hard when layering these things up and trying to kind of work out the line weights which are overlapping one another. Because I've got all four segments kind of overlapping each other here, it could be quite hard to go in and sort of tidy up some of those line segments. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do each of them separately as their own Make 2D. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select the first one here, select our view, do our Make 2D, and when we do it, there's a couple of things we want to make sure. We want to make sure we maintain the source layers and we also want to make sure we maintain this viewport rectangle. And this one's really important because it will help us line up all of our views when we try and line them up together once we've completed the drawing. So we'll hit OK. And then if we look in the top view, we'll see we've got our first section taken out there. 
And all I'm going to do is just repeat this process with each of my sections in my view here. And I'm going to pause the video and just quickly make 2D each of these other four sections. Now this is done, you can see I've got each of my four sections in their own drawing, each with the same frame, which I can then use to line these up when we start to edit up the line weights and the kind of art style that we're going to be adding to these particular views here. So now we've created our kind of four images here. I'm now going to bring them into Illustrator and we're going to work them up into our final cutaway drawing. So we're just going to select all four of those frames, which aren't overlapped. I've just stacked them one on top of the other for now. And then we're just going to go File, Export Selected, and we're going to save this out as an Illustrator drawing here. Like so. And for this, I'm going to preserve the model scale, and we're just going to do 1 meter is equal to 0 0.1 centimeters, I think, there which will actually do it at 1 to 1,000 in that way. Um, you might want to do it, if we do it at 1 centimetre, is 1 metre equals a centimetre, that's a 1 to 100 scale because a centimetre is a hundredth of a metre. So that should be a nice size when we bring it in. So I think we'll keep it at that. And then I'm going to hit OK. So now let's open up Illustrator and start to work this drawing up there. Now we have the file open in Illustrator, I'm going to start off by locating the drawing, which may be located off the artboard, as you can see here. Um, what we can then do is just select the drawing pieces and we just move them onto the main artboard, and you may want to scale these down as well, they're a bit large. What I'll then usually do is just go to my document setup, edit artboards, and just resize the main Illustrator artboard to fit over these four frames. We're going to resize them to the frame at a later point, but for now we're just going to kind of work on them separately and then stack them up at the end. So with this now in place, we can now start to add in some color and some line work onto this drawing. Because when we made our Make 2D, we maintained the source layers when we kept that drawing out, it means that we have our layers now on the side of our Illustrator file, and we can go in and give a line weight to each of the layers as per their kind of particular element that they're highlighting in the drawing. Um, I usually start by just selecting all of the objects here and we're going to just colour these in black. So we've got black line work on all of them. And then I'm just going to go through each of these layers and add a line weight to them. So starting with the walls, we're going to make this a kind of 0.25, which is a nice sort of thin but standard line weight for any kind of main bits of structure. And for the floors, I'm going to give a similar line weight maybe just slightly thicker of a 0.3. The other elements in this drawing I'm going to make at a slightly lower line weight, so the handrails should be quite thin, so I'm going to do a 0.1 for those. The columns should be slightly thinner than the walls, so we'll give those a 0.2. And the stairs, which are on another drawing, I think I'll give a 0.1 as well. I've also got this kind of base piece here, which could be a bit thicker, or for this, so we can make this around a 0.3 as well. And the kind of rationale for choosing these values is that we want the walls and the kind of floors to be the thickest line weight, and then any detailed parts like handrails, stairs, etc., to be slightly thinner, so they read as kind of secondary details in the drawing. I think I've also got a door on this one, and we'll make that a 0.1 as well, because that's another small detail. So now we've got our basic line work on each of these four layers of my drawing. The next thing we want to do is start to work up the section lines of these. Because we've cut away areas of the drawing and we've cut the drawing also in section, we want to highlight that that's been removed by making a thicker line wherever those bits have been cut. Now one way of doing this is just going around and selecting those particular lines, like this one for instance, and then just putting it on a higher line weight, and I think a 0.75 will be good for this. Now, by going around and selecting it can be quite a tedious process because you have to go around and select all of those lines and make sure they're added on there. And you might find with the Make 2D that sometimes it's not quite perfect. So actually, an easier way i found of doing this is just making a new layer, calling this section. Once we've made our section layer, we're then going to select the pen tool making sure we've got a black line work and a white fill for that. And I'm going to keep it on that 0.75 
line weight for my section and we're just going to redraw around this section line here and this is usually quicker than going in and kind of tidying up all of those points because it means we can sort of tidy up and fill over any inconsistencies in the Make 2D as we draw these pieces. And I'm just going to kind of go around tracing over these points and you may want to kind of remove the fill as you draw so you can easily see what you're doing. I'm just going to kind of fill around these bits here and you might have to do it in sort of smaller sections as well. We'll start with this one for the time being and then we're going to add in some more from there. And then you can add that white fill in there and slowly we can start to build up that section line and kind of tidy up the bits that are being cut. So I'm going to pause the video and just kind of go around and draw out my section lines in this manner for the other parts of the drawing. I've now finished adding that section line weight to each of the elements of my drawing. So we have our kind of thicker line that indicates where this drawing is being cut in relation to the whole drawing as a piece. Now what we're going to do is start to compile these drawings together. But in order to make sure they layer up correctly, we need to make sure that they mask each other as they get layered on top. Now a way to do this is to actually add a white fill to each of the drawings so they become kind of solid objects. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to lock the section line for now and then we're going to unlock the other layers. We're going to select these layers and for each of the objects we're going to make a paint layer. And to do that I'm just going to copy all of the layers for that particular drawing. Make a new layer at the bottom of this called paint. And then we're just going to go edit and paste in place those paint layers and we can lock the other ones for now. And now we've made those, I'm going to get rid of the line work on these layers. So we essentially just have an invisible drawing. And if you hide all the other layers, we can see that we can't see the drawing. But if we select it, we can still select the lines. So the drawing is there, but it just has invisible lines. Then we're going to use the live paint bucket tool to create a live paint group for this object. If you can't find this tool, it's just located below the shape builder tool there. And then we're just going to select the whole object and fill it in a white fill. And we can do that just by picking the white color there. And then we can turn our lines back on. So essentially nothing would have changed with the drawing. We've actually just added that white fill below the object. And I'm going to quickly do that for all of the other objects we have here before we start stacking them up. So now that's done, each of these have a live paint object that sits below those lines, which will allow us to kind of layer up each of these layers on top of one another. So now we've got that, I'm gonna unlock all my layers and we're just gonna group up each of these levels into one group each. Because we've got our kind of line weights added, we've got our live fill, and now we can just group them all together. And all we're gonna now do is just kind of take the squares and we're gonna just start to move them up and line them up to one another, just lining up the frames for each of these images on top of one another like so. And because we've added that live paint thing, it masks off the image below. So our live paint work on that image will mask the one below and allow us to stack all of these components up on top of one another. So we're just gonna take each layer and start to line them up and so thus constructing our drawing and kind of bringing it together. If you find that one layer sits behind another, like this one here, we can just select that group, go to Object, Arrange, and bring to front to bring it to the front of that level. And the same with the last one. We'll just move that into place, Object, Arrange, and bring to front to make sure it stacks up properly. And there we've got our kind of correctly laid off drawing. And we can actually then edit the artboard again just to match it to the frame of our drawing there. Let's start to pull this all together. Like so. So there we have our kind of constructed cutaway drawing and now what we can do is just start to add in some of the details. So it might be that we want to add some annotation to show which pieces are being pulled away from which. The way I usually do this is just adding a layer on top called annotation there and in this we can take a line I usually sort of make it a sort of thin 
black line and we can make it dotted as well. Let's give it a sort of three point dash and make it a kind of 0.25 line. And you can just use it to essentially sort of connect up and show where these pieces are being kind of pulled away from. So we can start to trace how that section comes together and where these elements sort of fit into the bigger picture of the whole building in this case. And I'll use these for the vertical elements as well, which might have been sort of pulled away from the pieces below that. We might want to show them kind of connecting back down here. So it's just as a sort of diagrammatic way to start telling this story and how these pieces connect together. The nice thing as well is because we've made live paint layers under each of these elements, we can also start to kind of work into those and add some color to this piece too. So it could be that if we go back to our layers, make sure they're all unlocked again, we can actually start to work into some of these groups. And if you double click in a group, you'll kind of go into that main group and we can start to work into it and we can find our live paint tool. Let's pick a nice kind of light blue and maybe give a blue tone to the whole piece. We can start to paint in some of these elements as well. If you triple click on an object with live paint, you fill the whole object. And because we've given our section line a white line it's outside of that live paint, it will keep that kind of white area for us. So we can go in, we can start to sort of add paint to each of these. I might quickly kind of add a sort of blue tone to all of these elements together. So we can start to really kind of build up this piece. If you've got areas that should be blank, we can just kind of give a no fill to that live paint bucket to make sure those pieces are being seen through correctly, like so. Let's just do it on this last one as well. Make sure we get that blue color and fill it in like so there. And if there's a bit here that should be white because this is a section we can also do that as well. So the Live Paint tool is very useful in this respect that it allows us to kind of tidy up any of those last bits and start to allow that kind of section line to be legible on there. And we can add different tones of color if we wanted to. I could go around and sort of making some areas dark blue or adding some different tones, but I think for now, we'll kind of keep it there because we're gonna finish off this drawing with one last element which we're going to add in which is a bit of shadow which we're going to take from our kind of rendered version and we're going to overlay this on to complete our kind of cutaway drawing here so for the time being i'm going to take this and we're just going to save our illustrator file as our kind of colored version there and i'm also going to just export this out as a jpeg file so we've got a kind of image file and make sure I use the artboards when doing so. So it's constrained to the frame that we've given it there. And what we're gonna do for the last part of this video tutorial is we're gonna render out some shadows for our cutaway drawing and just overlay them on top of this drawing here to give a bit of depth and three dimensionality to our drawing. To do this, I've just opened up our Rhino file again and made sure that I'm still using that same view that I've saved out as my named view to make sure it all lines up when we pull this together. I'm just gonna go into render. We're gonna set the current renderer as I'm just gonna use the legacy Rhino render for this one because it is a very quick way of rendering just the shadows for a scene. And we're just under the render properties gonna make sure that our aspect ratio is correct. So we want to make sure it's locked to the viewport I'm going to set the size as around 1,500. Maybe let's do 1,500 high and around 2,000 wide, and that will give us a nice kind of high resolution version of this image. And we're going to do this at a good quality there. And then I'm just going to scroll down and make sure I'm just using the sun, no skylight there. And we're going to have the sun coming in at around a kind of 45 degree angle just on manual controls here of the altitude and coming in from a sort of southwesterly direction there. Hit OK. And once we've set that, we can do a quick preview just to make sure that that's rendering correctly and that we've got some nice dynamic shadows there. And I think that's kind of working as I wanted it to. So then with that, we're then going to render out our high resolution version just by hitting the render button there. 
that render is now complete and we can now just save that out and we're going to save that as a JPEG as well in here, just calling it shadows. Then as the kind of final part of this video, we're now going to combine that shadow layer with the line work that I've got in my Illustrator file. So to do that, let's open up Photoshop. We're going to start by just taking my line work version and just dropping that into my Photoshop file like so. Then I'm going to find that rendered shadows I've done and we're going to drop that on top of the file. And they should perfectly line up because we've been constraining it to the viewport as we've been working on this image. So we can just turn that on and off to check and it looks like they pretty much line up there. So then we're just going to move that to a multiply blending mode and then we can load out the fill color and just lower the opacity there until we get the shadows that we're looking for to give a little bit of depth and three dimensionality to the drawing. And there we have our kind of completed cutaway. And if we wanted to work into this further, I could add more colors into the drawing to kind of show a bit more materiality or difference between some of the features of the design. I could add in some people and some trees in Illustrator. And I would do this all using my Illustrator file to build up those components and really kind of start to tell the story of this image. But I hope you found this video useful on creating cutaway drawings in Rhino 7. And if you want to watch any other videos on this process, please check out the videos on the channel.